going on folks as you can see I am still here I'm gonna try this again I'm not happy about losing that I had 300 and some dollars and I lost like 80 of it so I'm not I'm not happy with that so we're gonna reset the machine and see if we can't do better so let's get to it all right already off the rip nice win so I mean I'm, I'm already up like 126 bucks so anything above that is good Almost looks like the exact same one I just got <laughs> with the aces and the tens. The weather is just so bad. I'm scared to go outside. <laughs> so I figured I might as well just stay. Of course, there's no windows here, but I could see the glare from across the building from the, uh, the door that would be absolutely phenomenal hit that right side jackpot again oh man that would have been too cool i could see it's just super bright oh wow back to back let's go that's got to be the one you can't do it to me twice and not give it to me that's what i'm talking about i knew setting it up again would be a good idea absolutely awesome with that right side the right is right in the times three $218 that's an additional nine dollars i'll take that Absolutely take that. Oh my goodness, diamonds and roses. I, I gotta forgive you for how you treated me the other day because this is how you're supposed to treat me. You know how we feel for each other. Whew, 317 already. Starting from the initial 100, which I was already up 126, so now I'm up like 326 bucks. So let's keep it going. I wasn't ready to leave, I'm still not ready to leave. <laughs> now I'm gonna lose this $100 or so, and I'm gonna have to stay after that, after this video, and do another video, because I probably won't feel good about losing this $100. But man, oh man, that's almost twice now, back-to-back -back starting check. There's no way. I'm staying for sure. Oh my goodness, diamonds and roses. <sighs> Trying to give me a heart attack. Don't do that anymore. If you're gonna hit, just hit. <laughs> I wish there was a way to turn off that feature. Of course, I love the anticipation and the excitement, but it just happens so often. I don't need my uh, heart rate getting that high. Especially so so often. I don't need to keep doing that to me. Not necessito. Wow. So as I was saying, I can see the glare from across the building. See the doors. And it's so bright. I can tell there's snow just all over the place. I'm just not ready for it. Not ready to go in into that and ex just go anywhere. I don't think I have to go home. I can't stay here, but I don't think I have to go home. Well, <laughs> well I want to stay here, so this is a home away from home. I definitely love the idea of hopping in an RV, taking off. With the family, of course, not just by myself. I'm not going to get some milk in the grocery store. I'm going to stick stick by my family. Man, win after win, I'm loving it. Keep it going. Because growing up as a kid, I never got the opportunity. We never went camping. We weren't that type of family. My family, I don't know if they even understood. Well, maybe they did because where they grew up. My, I'm not kidding you when I say my... Uh, pretty sure my dad grew up in a hut. Not 100% sure on that. I guarantee he'll never admit it. He's got a lot of pride, I think, when it comes to that stuff. Now, I might be making that up. That's just the way I've always envisioned it. He was he lived on a farm, and I don't think uh, in the 50s in Egypt they had nice farmhouses like they do here in the U.S. Not all farmhouses are nice in the U.S., but some of the ones that I've seen uh, are quite nice. And then, of course, there's always the run-down ones. But, I mean, that's how much... It all depends on how much the person or people that live there care about the outside of the house. I'm sure the inside looked nice. Maybe, I don't know. But I, I just have a sneaking suspicious, and I, a suspicion, I don't know why, and this is how I've been since I was little. Like, anytime my dad would talk about where he grew up, how he grew up, I always just imagined huts. <laughs> and I'm gonna assume that TV has ruined that for me, because obviously I've never been there. I've never, I don't think I've asked him. I don't think I've ever asked him. I may have at one point, and he probably gave me like a weird look, like, what the heck are you talking about? Of course we had houses. <laughs> we didn't grow up in the jungle, you know? Stuff like that but i always just imagined like a nice square adobe like mud adobe i don't know why i really do not it has to be because of tv i think that's the best way to explain it. tv has ruined my perception of not necessarily 
you know, anything besides for the United States and third world country-ish. Not that Egypt is a third world country, but parts of it are, but it is developed. It is, uh, it has its own wealth to say, but I, I don't, just the imagining, you know, like sand and dirt and sticks, <laughs> like a little hut that a kid would make as a, you know, growing up playing in the mud, you know, you're making little mud houses. So I don't know why that's always what I imagine. Maybe I've seen it in books. Maybe I imagined, and it just looks like, um, you know, from the movie Aladdin, I loved watching the movie Aladdin. I'm pretty sure that was obviously based on real inspirations of the buildings over there. And I've seen it on TV, like news and stuff like that about Egypt. I just imagine like dirt buildings, <laughs> like sandstone buildings, pyramid-esque buildings. Which it'll be funny to watch Jeremy go over there, which hopefully they feel well enough to do that. But it'll be funny to watch Jeremy go over there and watch his videos and see him trying to haggle with these barters, because that's what they all are, you know, they're all hagglers. At least that's the way my dad described them. You know, if you go into the market, everybody wants to haggle. And I got 10 for a dollar, 10 for a dollar, 10 for a dollar. You want three, you want three, you want three, I'll give you three, three for a dollar, come on. Stuff like that, so. Fast talkers. It was always fun watching my dad at the flea market. You know, the way he would just talk with everybody trying to sell something. He'd always try, it didn't matter what it was, he always tried to get a better price than what they were asking. <laughs> that's just, I think that's just in our blood, or at least his blood. I think I lost that, I lost that. Uh, it did not transfer over into me. I think being in America definitely ruined that for me. I don't know how to haggle as best as he does. You know, my dad, I, he was a master haggler. Never paid full price at the flea market, never. <laughs> and I would always be, I was so little, I was so innocent, I didn't know. And like, you know, some people would sell video games and I was really big into video games growing up and he'd find, I'd, I'd see one, he, he never looked at them, never, ever, ever. That was never on his mind. He was always looking for tools or something that he could use or, you know, something that was of good quality that they were trying to get rid of. Like a good person should. I, he wasn't a reseller, he was more of a collector, but he always had reselling on his mind. He just never got to that point. George was the first reseller in the family and she obviously does well at it. And here I am trying, I'm doing okay. Doing okay, I could be doing a lot better. But he never ever looked at video games. And of course there were stalls where you'd walk by and they'd have tons of video games. And that was one thing that I cared to look at. Because besides for playing, they had a little playground over there, which he never left us alone. So we'd only get to play there for a few minutes because he'd want to keep shopping. You know, it's a flea market. They're open early in the morning and they close around noon. So he would let us play for like maybe 15, 20 minutes, maybe while we ate and drank, and then we'd continue our trip. So I was always looking out for video game stalls and I'd find them and sometimes I'd wander off by myself, but I wouldn't be too far away from him. I'd maybe be like three or four stalls away from him. And I'd be browsing him while he's browsing some tools or something. And I'd always ask me, you know, how much are the prices, stuff like that. And I would always be like, wow, really? You're selling this game for that low? And it's like a, $30 game that they're selling for 20 and I don't know any better. I'm just thinking it's not full price. You know, it could have been damaged, it could have been wrecked. I didn't know, it was just a video game to me. It's like five. <laughs> so I'd run over and grab my dad, 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 you gotta get this for me, it's so cheap. And he'd, uh, you know, say, oh, all right, we'll look at it in a second. And he'd continue doing what he was doing. And then he'd walk over there with me and he'd look at it, he'd be like, what is this? What am I looking at? What do you look, what is this? I tell him, oh, this is the game I, I've been wanting. He said, this is the game you've been wanting? I said, yes, it's the game I've been wanting. I've been looking at it at the store. It costs this much in the store, Dad. And of course, the guy on the other side trying to sell it's like, yeah, listen to your kid. He knows what he's talking about. This is a good price. And my dad's like, no, it's not a good price. I don't want to pay that for this. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, Dad, it's a good price. And he'd be like, no, that's not a good price. I'll give you $10 for this game. And the guy's like, no, no way, man. That's a $30 game. I'm selling it for 20. You got to give me at least 20. He's like, no, I don't give you 20. You take, you take 12. The guy's like, no, I'm not gonna take 12. So I'll do 18. No, I'm not gonna pay you 18. It's not $18. It's a game. It's a game my kid play outside. <laughs> like, come on, dad, it's, it's worth $30. Why won't you just pay? And he's like, hush. <laughs> oh man, I can't tell you how many times he's hushed me. And I've, I've missed out on deals because of ruining my dad's, you know, haggling, so. As I got older, I definitely learned to keep my mouth shut, though, so... It, uh, it ended up working out in my favor most of the time. But I just remember that one 
instance because afterwards you know he, he grabbed me he's like you know when you open your mouth i can't get you what you want because i'm not gonna pay that much for it i could have got it for this much but if you didn't say what you said you know the guy didn't want to come down because of you i said oh no <laughs> so you know you live and you learn and i definitely learned didn't learn how to haggle but i definitely learned not to open my big mouth when my dad was uh negotiating which is probably, you know, I learned how to negotiate in other ways, but just haggling with money, I just am not good at it. Like, I tell the machine, I want to give you a dollar for a dollar fifty's worth, and it says, no, you gotta give me a dollar fifty. I'm like, okay, machine, here you go, here's a dollar fifty. I can just hear my dad's voice, hush, you don't tell the machine you give it a dollar fifty. <laughs> Come on, Georgie. Georgie, yes! Is it hit? Yes! Oh my god, double jackpots, one on the left, one on the right. That's what I'm talking about. I knew it wasn't a good idea to leave earlier. And that's the big one, too. Oh, man. Vanilla George George, which I'm, I'm going to have to tell everybody I'm not allowed to call him that anymore because of cutbacks. There might not be cutbacks. We'll see. We'll see what happens by the end of this video. But I have been thinking about shortening his name. I've come up with a couple of things, but I think Vajiji is where we're going to go with it. So we'll see if I expose that here in a couple days. But due to cutbacks, that is where we're going to have to go. <laughs> I just thought I was so clever when I thought about that a little while ago. I was cracking up. I was literally cracking up thinking of that. Because it just works out so perfectly. But he didn't argue with me. You know, the fact that I even brought him home from Florida was a... Oh, diamonds and roses, yes! Did I get the... No! Didn't get the times three. Still, I'll take it. $485. That's what I'm talking about. That's awesome. I knew it was a good idea to reset the machine. And honestly, if it wasn't snowing, I probably wouldn't have stayed, so... The snow is good for some things, I guess. It is really pretty. I've, uh... I've been taking the kids to our front room where we have two big windows that looks out on the street. And we have, you know, a little couch in there and a chair. And I like to sit in there and drink my morning coffee with the kids. Or my morning tea. And we just sit there and it's been snowing. So we watch the snow fall down on this big beautiful windows from the big beautiful windows i got a heater in the room it's a nice little fireplace heater we actually set it up because it's she made uh the honey made last year a fake fireplace and it looks so cool so i made her the outline out of cardboard boxes and then she used like stick on drywall i think that's what it or not drywall sorry uh, what is it called oh no i can't think of what it's called now Wow, what a huge win! Well, $27.90, what a weird, weird win. Hmm. Pretty good, I'm still excited. I don't know why I just thought about it. I was like, why isn't that bigger? I feel like it should be bigger, but it is what it is. That's still pretty big, and I, I'm loving it, because I'm over the 500, which I like to stop when I'm over at 500, but we've got some cushion for the button pushing, so we're going to keep going. Wallpaper, that's what it's called. It's stick-on wallpaper. It's some really nice, heavy-duty stuff. So she used that to plaster all around the uh, fake fireplace. And then I, when I was younger, I bought a uh, TV stand that at the bottom it had a fireplace, a fake fireplace. One of those looks like those Amish built ones, but it's not that great of quality. So the TV stand itself is in our basement, but the fireplace I use as a space heater. It's a great space heater. Plus with the light, it looks like a, like a little wood burning fire. It's awesome, it's beautiful. I love putting in the rooms. Especially during the winter time, because at night, you know, it lights up like a wood-burning fire. And it's a space heater, so it keeps the... Our uh, HVAC is not that great in the house, I don't think. I think um, there's some type of issue with the blowers. I think a lot of people experience this, but the upstairs is never as warm as the first floor. And the basement, too, for some reason. The basement's always cold, which doesn't make any sense, because literally the furnace is in the basement. And there's two vents right from the furnace. You know, they're not more than 10 feet away from the furnace. It's like all the air wants to go up instead of straight. So the basement's cold, the upstairs is cold, and the first floor, this is gonna be absolutely epic. Oh man. The first floor is comfortable-ish. I have space heaters in the front room where we spend most of our time, but now I have a, now I moved that fireplace space heater to the front room so that I could sit there, look out the windows and still be warm. Maybe it's something to do with our windows. That's probably what it is. I doubt the people who lived here before us ever got the windows changed. And the installation I don't think is that great here either. It's just all speculations, of course. 
I, all I know is that the wiring in my house is very loopy and stupid. I'm gonna say that word, stupid. Stupid wiring, whoever wired this house did a terrible job. So many things that should not be connected are connected to each other. Like for instance, the basement and the garage are on one uh, breaker, which makes absolutely no sense to me. The garage, in my opinion, should always have its own breaker. The basement should have multiple breakers, depending on how big your basement is. Because if you have your washer dryer down there, those need to be on their own breaker, which I think those actually are. But then there's lights and there's outlets. And I, in my opinion, those should be on separate breakers as well because if the outlets go out, you don't want the lights going out with it. But of course that's more work and people don't ever want to do more work. And then I think the actual front room itself where we spend all of our time, where our TV is, is tied into that as well. So the basement lighting, the front room lighting and the garage are all tied into one breaker. Like that is absolutely silly to me. So if she's working downstairs in the basement and I'm outside working in the garage doing what I'm doing and I have a lot of, like, I have air compressors, I have certain power tools that I use, like saws and stuff, and if the kids are playing inside watching TV, that could trip the breaker. So it's very silly in my opinion. I think the wiring in my house is very loopy, and I've been going through and I've been changing out the, uh, the flip switches for the lights. I've been turning them to the click ones instead of the flip ones, I don't know. It's just more aesthetically pleasing to me. I like the way they look, I like the way they feel. Never liked the flip ones. I'm also trying to install fake ones as well because for some reason, once again, here's, I might as well just keep talking about the wiring in my house, which is a very nice house. They did it where they have, it's three switches right next to each other. So you got one switch, two switch, three switch. The third switch all the way to the right controls the closest outlet, which makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Why do you have that? I'm sure there's a good reason for it, but I don't like it. I don't think, for me personally, there's no good reason for it. I don't need an, a light switch to control an outlet. You know, especially since that outlet is what's controlling, you know, my internet, my TV, pretty much my big uh, surge protector that's there that has the most plugs into it. There's a light switch that can control that, and I've since we moved in, or actually since, not since we moved in, since Jackson was old enough to play with the light switches, so about five-ish years ago, I've had tape all up on that one switch and it's flipped up so he couldn't flip it down. And of course the kids poke holes into it and they try to flip it down just because it's something intriguing to them. You know, they can flip the other two switches, which one of them is a dimmer. So both of them control the lights. The two to the left of that one switch control the lights, which makes no sense to me. The one in the middle turns it on completely. The one all the way to the left is a dimmer switch, so it turns it on completely and you can dim it. Like, why have two switches for that? Makes no sense to me. You should have one switch and it's a dimmer. That's it. Cancel out the second one. Makes no sense. I don't understand who wired this house. So I went through and I changed it out the other day and I put a fake switch on the one all the way to the right, so the one that controls that outlet. So now the two wires are connected and I've got the little plug on it that you twist on there so it keeps them always connected so it's always on it'll never shut off now and it's got a fake switch there's a it looks like a button but you can't do anything with it it's not connected to anything and then the other two i switched out the dimmer for a newer dimmer and it's super duper cool i never knew you could adjust the insides of the dimmer switch never ever knew that well for this one you can because it's the click one so it also has a dimmer switch on the bottom and then if you open up the panel there's a little dial which you can control how low it goes and how fast it turns on there's a nice little one. So what that means is, if I have it turned all the way up, so the dial goes this way, if you have it turned all the way up, uh, when it's at the lowest setting, the light will be low, but a bright low. You can turn it down a little bit and then the light will be a low, like a medium low at the very lowest setting of the dimmer. You can turn it down one more time after that and it'll turn into a low low. So it'll be very, very dim, like almost worthless for being on. And then anything lower than that, completely shuts it off at the lowest setting. It doesn't even turn on. And what happens is like somewhere in the middle of that dimmer switch, the light turns on. So it turns off, turns on, and it's all the way on. So it increases that light very quick. It doesn't change the brightness, which I think is weird as the, on the high setting. But she, uh, I played with it and I had her tell me what's her favorite. She's the only one that likes the dimmer, the honey. She's the only one that likes the dimmer. I either like the lights on or off. And I prefer the lights off. I don't know what it is, but I have, especially at night. If the TV's on, I don't like the light on. It's like too much lighting for me. 
I don't know why. I don't, when I growing up, I wasn't like that. Growing up, I needed to have a light on with the TV on, or else my eyes hurt. But that's before I had LASIK, so maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe uh, getting the LASIK has adjusted my photo sensitivity. And growing up, I hated driving with glasses or even without my glasses if I had to, because I know a lot of people experience this. The auras around people's headlights looks like a a blurry halo is coming towards you and it would always hurt my eyes and even now it doesn't that i don't see that anymore because of the corrective surgery but what happens is at like dawnish so twilight so when it's the sun is going down but it's not fully down and there's still a little bit of gray lighting left i, I don't like to drive at that time because headlights it's just like having the light on with the tv on it's so distraction my eyes cannot help but look at it and it hurts so bad to stare into those headlights at that time of day once it's nighttime headlights don't seem to bother me it's so weird it's just that that like half an hour period give or take when the sun is just going down and it's pretty much gone but it's still there's still lighting from it it's not gone gone i call it the twilight time i don't know what you guys call it but it's like right before dusk completes itself and it becomes night that, that period is just terrible for me for driving. Like just, it's, I don't understand, it's like piercing, like those headlights just go straight through my head and blast me in the back of my brain. And it's so painful. Oh, I'm losing this money kind of fast. This is, it's going the same way it was last time. I hit the jackpot and then it just started going down from there. So I've got decisions to be made right now. Do I want to take the money and run? Or do I want to stay and keep having fun? But if I run, that means I have to go through the snow. If I hold it out for a few more minutes, something might change with the weather. Not that I can see what the weather's doing from here, so. They might have already stopped, who knows? It's just very bright outside, that's all I know. There we go, see, look at that. I convinced myself to stay and, oh, diamonds and roses, you trickster, you tease. I hit my mark and I kept going. Is that a sign? Hmm. Which I was thinking about, I was actually talking about it, not thinking about it. I was talking about it earlier, how people want me to reintroduce myself. Or not reintroduce myself, but I guess just introduce myself. Because they don't go back and watch the older videos. So I highly suggest that if you want to get to know me better, watch my old videos. The older videos from about 2019. Uh, those are some of the best videos to get to know me, get to learn who I am. And also go through What the Hails and try to find the videos that I'm in. They're a long time ago, but I'm in a lot of those videos from about two years ago, around the same period. So those videos were so much fun to help them make. But for some reason, I get messages on Messenger, and it's usually from people through my Facebook page, my Taking a Risk Facebook page. I do have a personal one as well, which some people find me on, which is fine. I don't accept all those friend invites just because safety reasons, you know. If, if we don't have mutual friends, I usually won't accept it. So if it's like a known thing that you're, there's a wild 20, I'm on 25, I need a 25, I need a 25, hiding. Oh, right next to it too. You know, I gotta protect my family, protect my sister, of course my girlfriend, stuff like that. Kid's mom. <laughs> gotta protect them from random weirdos that just wanna spy on, get through me to spy on them, you know? So I always get the certain messages, which I always think is so weird, because some of these people know me, and I don't know if this is like a default message thing, but it always says, I'd like to get to know you more. And that's, that's what it says, or can I get to know you more? Or can I get to know your background? Like, what does that mean? Like, is that, there's a big win. Was that my first hit since these free games started? Good Lord. It's a nice one too. And like I was saying, these are people that know me, that have watched my channel for a long time. I recognize a lot of the names. So it's weird that they, I don't know if it's like one of those default questions that it's already pre-set up for you and you just, You just click on it, and it sends it immediately. Or if this is like legit stuff. And I guess I figured if people who know me still want to get to know me, I should probably 
talk about myself more. So that was a decent win for 12 spins. Not bad. Over $2 a spin. Bring me back a little bit as I was complaining about that money losing. Just flowing out of my little... I like to call this my bank account. That little area right there. That's my bank account. So I don't, I don't know what those people want me to talk about, but I guess I could talk about like, my eye color is brown. <laughs> my hair color is dark brown. It looks black, but it's dark brown, I promise you. And there's of course some gray scattered in there now. My uh, barber decided to tell me that the last time I was getting my hair cut. I showed her my one gray hair that I know about and she was like, nah, honey, you got a bunch growing in the back. I was like, what? <laughs> She was like, oh yeah, you didn't know? I was like, no. It's like, I've only ever seen the one right up front and he's so predominant. He like literally sticks up. He's the strongest, tallest looking hair that I have and it's right up front, right on the left. And she was like, oh no, baby, you got them all up in the, on the back. And I was like, oh, I can't see that. And I, I thought I could look, but I, I can kind of see the top of my head if I hold a mirror, right? But I've never seen the grays. And she was, she was going through my hair while she was cutting it. Like, here's one, here's one. I was like, are you serious? And she's like, well, let me look, because it might just be the water that I sprayed in your hair. And she was like, nah, I think they are gray, baby. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I was like, dang, I thought I had a few more years, but the one the one that I know about, it's very charming. It's a very charming hair. I call it my my hair of wisdom. The uh, It's the one gray hair, and it's not even gray, it's silver. That's the best part about it. At least to me, it's silver, because it has a shimmer. And I was telling her, I was like, it's so weird because my beard, I don't have gray hairs in my beard yet. I have red hair. And I was trying to read up on it. There we go. Some more free games. Goodness gracious. All that money I won from the first one's gone already. I got, okay, I was going to say I got to stop clicking on that one first, but that's why I do it. Oh, don't do that to me. Okay. Okay, there we go. No. Oof. Thought that was going to be the five. All right, we got to find this wild five power of the viewers help me decide this one no not that one either no i gotta breathe sometime oh oh man where's the other 25 up there okay okay so yeah i have random red hairs in my beard and i've done 23 and me which is a genetic test and it's broken down all of my background and history and that's how I found out that we're Italian, Greek, and uh, a lot of Mediterranean. We're a lot of Mediterranean. And I also have a, rel a distant relative genetic, a distant similar genetic to Napoleon. So we may or may not be related to Napoleon, which is pretty cool because he did at one point conquer Egypt, which makes sense and he took quite a few women. That's what they do when they conquer. And Egyptian women are gorgeous, absolutely beautiful, so it makes sense that I mean, the French are predominantly in Egypt as well because of that, so it makes sense. There's, there's a lot of French and Egyptian intermingling. And of course, Greek as well, you know, when uh, Mark Anthony went down there and conquered Egypt as well, and he met up with Cleopatra, so it makes sense that all of that is in our genetics. But I did find out that we're a lot of uh, Sub-Saharan African, too, on our dad's side, which is pretty cool. And that's the cool thing about the 23andMe that I did. I get to find out a lot more than, let's say, if George did it, because... George doesn't carry the Y chromosome like I do. So if she wanted to find out her dad's side, she'd have to get her dad to do or one of her brothers, which I've already done it, so I already have those answers for her if she ever wants to know. And I think she has actually done something like that, too. And she should have gotten similar results, I'd imagine. Unless things happened and somehow we're not entirely related. But that's not true. I don't think that's true. Just ignore what I just said. That's the ramblings of the realist but it is very cool that I found out we're uh, sub-saharan African on our dad's side and then on our mom's side is where all the other stuff comes from all the Italian the Greek British French I think we're point so this is gonna be funny I think I've mentioned this before a long time ago but for the new people that are here a lot of people who know George there's a big joke that she's Asian I found out that we have 0.03% Japanese in us, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. And I absolutely love that fact because I absolutely relish the uh, Japanese culture, you know, the honor that comes with 
uh, being a samurai and all that cool stuff. I love history. I love learning all about that stuff. Just the fact of, I know World War II is a touchy subject still, but uh, the Kamikaze Warriors, you know, when they were done, wow, more free games. I'll take them. I'll take them. I'd like to get those 25 free games. That'd be great. I think it was absolutely crazy that they loved their country so much, wow, that they were willing to kill themselves for its... Wow, did you see the 25s all hiding around that 7? Like, they definitely put their their people above themselves, because that's what they were doing it for. It, I mean, it, you could say it was for their country, but it was for their family, for their honor. It was very honorable to die in battle. A lot of cultures were like that um, throughout the ages. Honorable death was to die in battle. Stuff like that. Which is... In, it was very intriguing to me as a young guy because I always wanted to be in the military. I always figured, you know, if I'm going to die, it better be for something. And my country was something to me. Now it's my family. You know? As I got older, now I'd like to... If I'm going to... If I if I do have to pass in an untimely way, I hope it's for my family. I hope it's not because of a drunk driver or something silly like that. So it's very cool to find out that I we have 0.03% Japanese in us, and it, it means George is Asian, and I'm Asian. And Egypt is technically, even though it's in Africa, it's considered an Asian country, believe it or not. But for some reason, at some point in history, uh, Caucasian people, I'm going to assume it was the British people because they had a British empire in Egypt as well, they decided that Arabic people are Caucasian. They didn't give us our own classification. Even to this day, we still don't have our own classification. They, they have slightly begun starting to put it on different applications. But if I fill out a government form, Middle Eastern, it might now be. I haven't filled out a government form in a long time. Look at that win, $9.99. That's pretty cool. But all the government forms I've filled out in the past do not have the option to put Caucasian. They, always, they have the option of other now, and you fill in what it is. But our... I would like there to one day be a Middle Eastern option. I don't know, I don't, I, it, there's nothing wrong with being classified as Caucasian, but I don't feel like we fit that genre, you know, that's a, that's not us, in my opinion. We should have our own thing. I mean, at the very least, I guess we could put Asian. Because <laughs> technically, Egypt is part of Asia. It's part of the Middle East, and the Middle East is part of Asia. Which, that's another thing. Maybe it should be its own thing. The Middle East should be its own thing. It shouldn't be part of Asia or Africa. It's not its own continent, so you can't give it its own continent. But it could be its own subcontinent, I guess. The Middle Eastern area with all the Middle Eastern countries. So if George is watching this, I just informed you that we are... 0.03% Japanese. And we are, in fact, Asian, my sea star. So stop telling people you're not Asian. <laughs> so there's a fun, fun little thing to learn about the Risk family. We are all kinds of Mediterranean plus Asian. With distant relatives that may include Napoleon Bonaparte. Or Bonaparte. I wish we could go further into it. I'd have to have my dad, I think, take one. I think I talked to him about it, but he's not interested. Because I don't know, we don't know anything about our dad's side of the family. We know about his brothers, a couple of his brothers. We don't know about all of them. I know he was a sibling of ten, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But he, they, there was no records. They grew up on a farm. They were birthed in the farm. I'm pretty sure they had a midwife come in. And they were all birthed in the farm. And so there's no, like, public documentation or records about any of that stuff. It's all just family records. And that's if they're even, they still exist. Of course, growing up where he did, it's, it's surprising if people even knew how to read and write. You know, that wasn't a huge necessity growing up on a rural farm. You had to know how to work hard. That's about it. Which explains why I like to work hard. And maybe that's why I have reading problems, but I really don't. I, I'm a very good reader. I read very well, I should say that. 
And I did have dyslexia, or do have dyslexia, one of the two. I think with enough training, I overcame a lot of that. Oh man, dropping down. On diamonds and roses, I don't want to. I don't want to have to cut early because I don't want to keep losing. But it would be very neat to know more about my father's side, especially like distant relatives or distant ancestry. That's that's what's more intriguing to me. Of course, I'd love to know all the people. And 23andMe actually helps you with that. They tell you who your distant relatives, like your third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth cousins. And it's absolutely crazy because it, you know, we're all. Some, in some way, shape, or form, most of us are related and by very distant relatives. You know, if you think about it, a lot of people had a lot of kids a long time ago. And I don't even mean a long time ago, like two or three generations ago, people were having seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve kids. So, and then all those kids, most of them had kids. And then all those kids, most of them had kids. So, I think I was reading somewhere, to go back like four generations, you need 64 people or something like that. Something like that. Maybe it was more than that. Maybe it was farther back than that, you need 64 generations. But it was just a weird, odd number. Because to make you, you need two people. To make those two people, you need four people. To make those four people, you need eight people. So it keeps going back like that. So somewhere down the line, we're all somehow related. Of course... If you believe in Christianity, you believe in Adam and Eve, that we are all related from the original mother and father, or I guess son and daughter, right? Would they be the son and daughter? Secondly, Jesus and God? I don't know. Let's not get into that. Somebody will correct me. <laughs> but I would love to know more about my father's side. I know a little bit more about my mom's side because they actually, um, she grew up with a little bit more money, not a lot. She was still very poor. She grew up in an orphanage, actually. But my mom, her mom uh, was married to a wealthy guy who ended up passing away, and his brother ended up taking all of that money. Oh, lucky me. Really? Lucky me? Yes, I'm lucky. Thank you. I appreciate it, Dems and Roses. So my mom's dad ended up passing away when she was very young, I think like two or three, and he was a wealthy photographer. That's the way she always explained it to me, and he was the one where we get our... Uh, different genes from because my mom was an Egyptian woman and he was a British man with Italian and Greek and the French and all that it comes from his side of the family and he had green eyes he was a six foot something like six foot three gentleman with green eyes and very salty that none of us were able to inherit that gene but I got the the, the height at least I'm the tallest one in my family for now almost six foot and I don't think anybody else is above six seven or five seven so I definitely got the height I also got the slender build, which I look, seeing pictures of my grandfather, which my mom has one or two, I am very uh, keen to looking like him, which is pretty cool. And I think most of us, me and George for sure, take after our mom. We have the lighter skin and um, we have the gentler features. My dad definitely has that Egyptian Arabic look. He's a little darker, very broad, short and stocky. So I would love to know more about Dad's side. And I don't know if that'll ever happen. I really don't. I would be blown away to actually find records or documentation about his side of the family. I guess it'd be fair to say I'd like to learn more about my mom's side, too. Because we really don't know much past... I don't know about her grandparents. I don't know about my mom's grandparents. So it would be my great-grandparents. I don't know anything about them. Which, if anybody watching knows any way of figuring stuff like that out without doing, like, Ancestry.com or trying to trace records down themselves, if there's a website that's specifically made for finding, like, lost documentation, I don't know if Ancestry.com is made for that. I figure all the commercials I've ever seen at Ancestry.com, they are based on records that are easily accessible. I don't know, maybe they do some digging, too. Maybe I'll just look at Ancestry.com. I think maybe actually that's what George did was Ancestry.com. I think. But she found out pretty much the same stuff I did except for the dad's side of the family because she doesn't have the male gene. I'm 
Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, man, I was really hoping to hit big. I'm going to go ahead and take that 400. I don't want to drop below it again. I already dropped below it once. I already lost. I was up to 500 and some. I already lost another 100. Seems like it's doing that to me again. But now if I stay, it's possible that I could hit again with another jackpot. I've already hit two jackpots. That should be enough. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and subscribe. If you haven't already, make sure you thumbs up, like the video. Comment section below. Let me let me know what you guys think. Can I find out more about my mom's side of the family or my dad's side of the family without going through Ancestry? Is there another website that more people should know about and that they don't? Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I had so much fun. I hope you all did too. I'm going to go weather this weather and see what happens. Take it easy, folks, and I'll see you in the next one.